So a thought occurred to me while I was listening to the recent debate um, between Baring and Crouton T against vegan gains and whoever his friend John was. Now, for a good while, they just kept going in circles over and over again about the morality of eating meat and then trying to define how objective or subjective morality was and how certain lines of reasoning could lead to certain conclusions and so on and so forth. And the entire time I was just sitting before my computer screen pondering what would be done with all of the animals who exist solely to be food products now. So I did a bit of digging, and lo and behold, roughly 22 billion farm animals exist today, with the majority of them being chickens, followed by cattle, followed then by pigs and sheep. Now consider, if you will, just what it takes to sustain a mammal of that size. Let's take the pig for a nice medium between a chicken and a cow. Now, let's say tomorrow everyone across the globe went vegan, which means all of the people who were already starving to death probably just starved to death any which way, and we'll leave that particular moral quandary alone for now. But if tomorrow everyone throughout the entirety of the species decided to go vegan, and furthermore, the, uh, the sort of PETA-style vegan, let's say. Let's say we're going halfway there. Food is our friends. We stop eating meat because we respect the animal's right to bodily integrity, so on and so forth. What's to be done with those 22 million, I'm sorry, 22 billion, with a B, farm animals? Well, we certainly can't release them into the wild. We know for one thing they'll either be wiped out and allow for overpopulation of other predators, which will offset the entire ecology of that area. Um, Or likewise, perhaps they may become some feral breeds with populations already so strong that they pose the unbearable burden to that particular ecology. Either which way we know we can't let them go, so what are we going to do then? Are we going to stuff 22 billion animals into friendly farms? Little petting zoos? Maybe folks like Vegan Gains, with his uh, rather large YouTube channel, can take some of that sweet, sweet ad revenue Google AdSense money and... um, you know, buy up several tracts of land until he perhaps owns the entire state of North Dakota, where he can personally house those 22 billion farm animals. People want to go round and round and round in circles about the morality or the ethics to eating meat and to farming. And while so many of us can come to honest conclusions about how disgusting factory farming conditions really are, And we can largely agree that even when it comes just as a carnivore sensibilities to understand that, for instance, meat which is raised in less than stressful conditions is better for you and tastes better. We can all agree to some level of humanity with the thing. But if we're going to start looking into the morals and principles of the question of veganism and vegetarianism, we're going to first need to acknowledge the realities posed. The existence of not only factory farming, but agriculture and uh, animal husbandry, the the entirety of farming animals for food, from its history to its point now, has created artificial ecosystems. These billions of animals would not exist if we had not created the farms and conditions and breeding conditions to allow them to exist at all. Is this saying that because we created them, we therefore claim ownership to them? I'd say to a certain extent, yes, but let's ignore that argument for right now and let's uh, take a moment to appreciate the practical imperative which sits before us. 22 billion animals exist on this earth specifically for our consumption in one way or another. If we were somehow to find a food source that could entirely replace that, those 22 billion farm animals and their own progeny all of whom exist for the explicit purpose of feeding the human race, would be without a purpose. And additionally, they would either become a burden unto humanity, which we simply could not endure, taking care of these animals that we're not going to eat, not going to slaughter, perhaps we'll even allow them to breed, because after all, they're entitled to dignity, they're entitled to bodily integrity, right? 22 billion. We... We have roughly 7 billion people on this planet right now, and we have such extraordinary 
problems taking care of them. How are we going to feed 22 billion other mouths? Are we going to let them just starve, perhaps? Or maybe we can just count on the predators, but then we've upset the ecology. So on and so forth. Constantly treading further in to the muck in the mire, leaving ankle and knee-deep footprints each step of the way that cannot be filled in. And we really have no place to go except forward. These 22 billion animals have no place in the world outside of that which we have created for them. If we do not sustain the cycle of breeding and consumption that we have created, or at least if we're going to attempt to break off from it, if we cannot come up with some multi-generational plan that we as a species will stick to, then all of this, the world needs to go vegan shit, it's a moral imperative, any conceivable argument anyone could really come up with in terms of why eating meat is wrong, goes clean out the fucking window if it becomes anything more than a personal matter of choice. Now, when it comes to personal matters of choice and veganism in general, I think it's important to remember that such is more or less entirely a matter of personal choice which can only exist in a culture of excess. In a culture of scarcity, you can't go passing up food because you have an ethical or moral obligation to it, lest you starve in many places. So if we're going to talk about the moral and ethical arguments against eating meat and so on, we have to wonder that as the industry itself exists as it does, as the meat is going to be there and so much of it goes to waste, is it not then? more morally repugnant to pass up food on our own when there are starving children in Africa. Think of the children. At least think of the children before you think of the chickens. Cheers. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster, and treat those two monsters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, 